You'll turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. My scripture is from verses 21 down to 33 or 34. But I'm going to read something out of verse 14 for you. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Jump over to verse 21, where we're going to be preaching from. And they went into Capernaum, and straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them with, as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. And come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they all were amazed and so and as much that they questioned amongst themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit that they do obey him. Jump down to verse. 31. He came and took, no, 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 32. And that even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of the divers' diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devil to speak because. They knew him. I'm going to stop right there. I want to preach to you, exalting Jesus in exposing Satan. Exalting Jesus in exposing Satan. Mark, when he started off his gospel, he started off as Jesus coming to be baptized. Mark is, Mark is, written, is, is, is Peter talking, and John Mark is the one that scribed it. It's Peter, eyewitness account, when you read the book of Mark. You're reading about Peter's eyewitness account. So Jesus comes to get baptized by John. After he gets baptized, he is led out to be tempted of the devil. You're going to see that. Then he picks up his disciples. After he picks up his disciples, he begins his ministry. He began cleaning house. Amen? So my theme is that when the light comes in, darkness must go. When the light come in, darkness must go. When Jesus come on the scene, several things happen. Several things occur when Jesus come on the scene. Three things in this particular text I want to point out to you when Jesus arrives. First, he exposes. He exposes like a light that shines into darkness, he exposes. He evicts like a homeowner getting rid of a bad tenant, he evicts. He eliminates like a cleaning agent, like bleach, eliminates dirt, and the unclean elements that it leaves behind. So as we, leave, as we look at the text here in Mark, I want to focus on Jesus, the power over Satan. Jesus' power over Satan, the devil, and unclean spirits. That's what we're going to look at. Bring up that scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. I, want, I really want you to see something. Ephesians 6, verse 12, you should know it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. I want you to notice the plurality of those, of, of, of principalities, of powers, and of rulers of high places. So in other words, if you, in the, if you are in the battle with the devil, call on Jesus. If you're in the battle with the devil, call on Jesus. Don't call your neighbor, call on Jesus, amen? Before you call your friend, call on Jesus, amen? Before you call your pastor, call on Jesus. 
Don't call Ghostbusters. Call on Jesus. Who you going to call? Don't call on Jesus. Because Jesus knows how to deal with Satan. Jesus knows how to deal with demons, devils, and unclean spirits. Amen? Amen. So remember when Jesus comes on the scene, he exposes. He evicts. He eliminates. As a child, Jesus exposed the fact that his, his father is God in heaven about being about his father's business. As a man, he exposes the fact that he must fulfill all scripture by being baptized by John at the river Jordan. As God, he exposed the fact that he has power over temptation, the devil, and death. Amen. I'm going to have to get ready because we're going to battle this devil now. Amen. So, so I want you to understand that, that we, while Jesus was on this earth, he's 100% man and he's 100% God at the same time. Amen? 100% man, 100% God at the same time. So when Jesus comes on the scene, the first thing he does after being baptized with John, the scripture says, well, well Luke and, and Matthew say he was led by the Spirit, but, but Mark said he was driven by the Spirit to be led into the willing to be tempted of the devil. He was driven there. He had to do it. But Jesus not only defeats Satan with the word of God, he exposes, he evicts, he eliminates several factors about Satan in the wilderness. First of all, he exposes Satan's tactics and objectives. Satan's entire objective is to get you, to get me, to serve him, to bow down and worship him, and to rebel against Almighty God. Don't forget you got an adversary. Don't forget you got an avid. That's his ultimate uh, objective, to get you to serve him. So Jesus exposed the fact that Satan only had three ways, three tactics to accomplish that task. That's the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's all he got. Amen. He exposed to that. You need to understand that there is only one Satan, but many devils. One Satan, but many devils. So remember, Jesus come to expose, to evict, and to eliminate. And Jesus is in the wilderness 40 days with Satan. 40 days with Satan. I wouldn't want to be anywhere one minute, one second around Satan without Jesus. But Jesus, 40 days with Satan. So the first thing Jesus exposes in the wilderness is the fact that we can overcome Satan and his devils. If we control our lust, our pride, and our flesh. Jesus exposed that, that we can, over, we can overcome the devil like Jesus did. We controls our lust, our pride, and our flesh. The first thing he evicts is the level of authority the devil has in the earth realm. Although he's God of this world, he's prince of the air, the devil has no authority over the saints of God unless you give it to him. The devil has no authority over the saints of God unless you give it to him. I always tell a person that, 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 that the devil can't curse you, but you can curse yourself. You can't curse yourself. The devil can't curse you. He has no power over you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I understand this about the devil. But what but, but, but he eliminates. The first thing he eliminates, so we know where he evicts, what he, what he eliminates is the fear we have of the devil. We just have to use God's words against him. Amen. Right. I'm not afraid of the devil. You're afraid of the devil? Anybody afraid of the devil? It's okay if you're afraid of the devil. Say that I'm afraid of the devil. But you don't have to be afraid of the devil. You got Jesus with you, amen? You got the Holy Spirit, and he already overcome the devil, amen? You got to understand this about the enemy, that Jesus put him at a limited capacity, put him at a limited capacity. He can only go so far. God put the devil on the leash. God put the devil on the leash. I'll tell you about this story. This boy and his daddy, they stayed on this street, Brother David, David Lee. They stayed on the street. You're afraid, you're afraid of dogs, but they stayed on this street. The little boy, his daddy, he had this vicious dog, stayed about three days, I mean three doors down. And the boy, he was scared to pass the house. So I said, every time he passed the house, that vicious dog, woo, 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 vicious, big dog. The boy scared. So one day his daddy's going to walk with him down the street. He said, Daddy, can we cross the street? He said, no, come on, son. He said, Daddy, that dog going to get us. He said, come on, son. So the daddy walking. And he goes up against the, the house, and he opened the gate. And the, and the dog, he, woo, 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 and he come off the porch running 
so forth, but got that leash pulling them back. And, 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 and the boy said, Daddy, when you're scared, say, no, son. I knew he was on the leash, and he could only go so far. The leash only this far. The devil can't mess with you unless God to. He only can go so far. Amen. I ain't scared of no devil. He has limited power. He has a limited strategy. And he has limited time. His time is short. His time is short. So as Jesus begins his ministry, he picked up his disciples, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, all fishermen. He said, I'm going to make, make you fishers of men. And he gives them authority. He's going to give them authority. He begins his ministry in Capernaum. Jesus exposes, evicts, and eliminates the demonic curse that Satan has over the city of Capernaum. You're going to see it. The whole city is pretty much possessed when you watch, when you read this. It's the city where Peter, Andrew, John, and James live. Amen. The whole city. So prior to Jesus coming, the devil and unclean spirits are having their way with all the people in the city, almost like Orlando or anywhere you go. Devil, devil's all there just taking over. Everywhere you go, the devil, unclean spirit, just taking over, even in the church. But Jesus comes on the scene. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. The spies, the Pharisees, and Sadducees, they, they have in church. They have in church. They said he went into the synagogue. They have in church. They're they, they doing their thing with no true impact, with no power. They got a powerless church, a powerless synagogue, and a powerless people. A powerless church leads to a powerless people. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So Jesus exposes four things in the text I want to show you. First of all, in verse 21, again, it says that he went to Capernaum straight away. He entered into the synagogue and taught, and they were astonished at the doctrine, for he talked with one as one with authority. He exposed them to astonishing doctrine. He preached the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And understand that, that once you've been exposed to sound doctrine, the meal of the word, you can't go back to milk and cookies. You can't go back to milk and cookies. Once you've been exposed to meat, the sound doctrine, Amen. you can't go back to milk and cookies. You've been through boot camp. He exposed them to or I say this for no, 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 not no, it didn't. thank you. It didn't want to come out. Say it, say it loud. Authoritative, authoritative. That's what you're supposed to do. Thank you so much, Pastor. I get choked. I got to slow down. He is supposed to authoritative doctrine. In other words, absolute truth. Absolute truth. Then this is what the church is missing today. This is what church is missing today. Preaching with authority and power. Preaching that has impact. Transformative power. Churches are missing that. Amen. Most churches are getting the watered down gospel. A do it yourself thing. To so expose them to us, astonishing doctrine, authoritative doctrine. Then I'm going to jump down to verse 27. We're going to come back up in a minute. And they was amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? What new doctrine? Who exposed them to a new doctrine? A new doctrine, a new way of living, a new way of thinking. So if you're leaving this church, if you leave the church the same way you came in, and you go back home with no change, something's wrong. Something's wrong. It's authoritative doctrine. That's what's happening on Wednesday night that when Pastor Mickey is preaching authoritative doc doctrine. Amen. What's happening on Thursday when Simon is teaching authoritative. What's happening in Sunday school right here, authoritative doctrine. What's happening right here, right now, authoritative doctrine. Can't go back to milk and cookies. No way. No way. <laughs> so next thing he exposed us to is right there, in, and this way we're going to count out in a minute, verse 23. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? He exposes the unclean spirit hiding in the church. He is supposed to be an unclean spirit hiding in the church. Satan working in the church. 
You know Satan come to church too, right? Satan come to church. But he can't stay. I will don't let Satan get comfortable in your church. Don't let him get comfortable in the church. It appears that this man, this unclean spirit, had been in the church for a while. He'd been in that synagogue for a while with no deliverance. In the church for a while with no conviction. In the church for a while with no salvation experience. Don't let it be said about here. He's been there for a while. So let me tell you this story about the devil coming to church. The devil came to church one day, Pastor Mickey. He sat on the back row. He was up there testifying. Talk about what the devil made him do and all that. He couldn't take it no more. He jumped up. And he runs out. Started crying on, on the steps of the church. And the usher, like Sister Norma, went out there patting him on the show. What's wrong, devil? No people that lying on me. Talk about I made him do it. I didn't make him do that. I didn't make him do that. They wanted to do it. They lying on me. Don't let the devil come to your church. And don't be lying on the devil. That's his job. His job is to lie on you. Well, you lying on the devil. Don't let the devil hide in the church. That when the church door is open, the devil wants to come in. When the children of God shows up, you best believe Satan's going to show up. You best believe it. The scriptures tell us that. Scripture says the son of God came to present himself to the Lord and Satan came too. Don't fool yourself. Satan comes to church. But don't let him hang out around the church. Don't let Satan cry in your ear. If the church is doing what it's supposed to be doing, the devil won't hang around the church. And the church should be exalting Jesus and exposing the devil. Amen. Exalting Jesus and exposing the devil. Amen. Amen. The scribes and the Pharisees, they couldn't see, they couldn't identify the unclean spirit. They couldn't, they couldn't see him. They didn't know how to identify Satan. They could not see the devil sitting right next to him. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it. Just ask the person next to you. You're not a devil, are you? Ask me, I, I wasn't going to do it, but, but just ask, you're not a devil, are you? Because you don't know. You never know. Ask them, if you're a devil. If they get mad, then you know they're a devil. <laughs> so I'm glad you asked. No, I'm a child of God. Mm. The devil sitting right next to him. And that reminds me of this sad thing that happened in South Carolina back in 2015. Y'all remember? The black historical church, Mother Emmanuel, AME Church. And Dylan, this young white supremacist, Dylan Rufus, his name, came into that church. Sit through a Bible study. Sit through a Bible study. And they couldn't identify the devil sitting right there with him. Killed over nine people in that church. Don't let the devil hang out in the church. Without identifying them, amen? Identify them. Mm. You see, the devil, Satan is slick. He's clever. He has many of disguises. He can show up in a pretty dress and silk stockings and high heels. He can show up in a nice tailor-made suit. Yes, he can. He can show up with a Bible in his hand, ready to devour whoever he can get. Hey man, what you say? <laughs> they even won't, they won't open. Very good. He showed up with a Bible in his hand, seeking who he can devour. On the streets, you may catch him in a ministry or a jogging suit. He may drive an expensive car, or he may, maybe even a hoopty. If he have to catch the bus to get to you, he'll catch a bus to get to you. But ask the Holy Spirit to help you identify Satan when he comes near you. Amen. He can have the face that looked like a friend. Ask Simon Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. So in verse 24, something happens here. In verse 24, he said, Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. When power... When the power of sound authoritative doctrine is spoken, 
the devil will tremble and reveal him. He will tremble and reveal him when, when the power of sound doctrine come up. The devil can't take it. He's he, he going to say something. He's going to shout. Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus? You're right. What have light like to do with darkness? What have light like to do with darkness? But here's the deal. If you're preaching and talking about the blood, the devil can't stay. If you're preaching and talking about Calvary, the cross of Calvary, the devil can't stay. If you're preaching and teaching about the power of the Holy Spirit, the devil can't stay. The word of the God, the spirit of the God, which is the sword of the spirit, will cut him. He will cry out. It's the word of God that does the exposing. The spoken word, the revealed word, the exalting Jesus and the exposing Satan. But no, it's something interesting. The unclean spirit knows Jesus and his power. He knows. He says, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. But that's not the only time in Mark 3. You're going to see it in Mark 3, 11. Let me just go over that real quick. Mark 3, 11, he's preaching again. And, and the spirit come up on, and, and unclean spirit come. In fact, I'm going to start Mark 3. So at verse 9, he, he, he's in Tyre and, and Sidon. In verse 9, Mark 3 says, and he spake to his disciples, a small ship to wait on him because of the multitude lest they should stone him. For he had healed many in, in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as plagued. And, and unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down and crying, saying, Thou art the Son of God. The unclean spirit, the first one says that you're the Holy One of God. This one says you are the Son of God. If he went into the garden and, and, and the garden of uh, 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 Gasparin with, with, with the man in the tomb, he's going to say, He's going to say, what have we to do with you? In fact, this is what he says. He cried out. He said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Most high God. The unclean spirit knows who he, Jesus is. Call on Jesus. You're dealing with the devil. Amen. In fact, in Acts, we ain't going to go there, but Acts 19, even Paul, there, it said, I think verse 15 said that they, they were going to do an exodus. These sons of a skid come to do an exodus. And in and, 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 and unclean spirit, they, they, but in fact, the, the, the son say, we adore you by the Jesus of Paul. And, and, and the spirit says, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? That's what the devil going to tell you. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? He knows me. He knows Pastor Mark. He knows you. He knows you. Yeah, don't have him say, who are you? I'm a child of God. I got authority over the devil. You got authority over him. And in fact, in fact, look at verse 25, what Jesus do. I, I love it, what Jesus does. And we go back to Mark 1, verse 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold that peace. Hold that peace and come out of him. Basically, Jesus tells the devil to shut up. Shut up. Sometimes you got to tell the devil to shut up. Hold your peace. Come out of him. Tell the devil to shut up. But I, 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 Dr. Moore, I, 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 you got to help me with this. How is that the demons know him and they tremble and obey, but we that are believers are blind to him and continue in arrogance and disobedience? How is that unclean spirit can obey, but we continue our disobedience and arrogance? Jesus tells us to hold our peace and we really, really, really get ready to start acting the fool. Keep on talking. He said, Jesus said, hold your peace and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But yet we still go and do and act a fool. But the Holy Spirit, but the, anyway. But how did they know him and who he was? Understanding that Satan and his devils are fallen angels. Fallen angels. They seen him operating in glory. They seen his oneness with the Father. Bring up that Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. This message came out of another message. I, I won't go. I, I can go on that war in heaven, but there comes the war in heaven, and Michael and the angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and they prevailed not. Neither were their place found anymore in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Isaiah fourteen twelve says this: How art thou fallen? From heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. 
How art thou, how, how thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the, upon the mountain of the congregation in the north, side of the north. So they knew who Jesus was. They knew they seen him operating in glory. Amen. So that's Jesus exposing. Let's get to Jesus' eviction. So that brings us to the eviction. Lucifer, Satan, and his devil was evicted from heaven. God gave him an eviction notice. Yeah, I served the devil an eviction notice. So in our text, Jesus is serving eviction notice. Let's look at it. In fact, in verse 27, this is what he's evicting. He says, what thing is this? He's evicting the old way of thinking. He's evicting the old way of thinking, the old way of living. Powerless way of thinking. He's evicting that. Romans 12 says, be ye not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. He, he's, he's evicting. It's a new doctrine. He says, this is a new doctrine. He's evicting the old way of teaching. The old way of teaching. Now through the authority of the word of God, they can recognize and speak to unclean spirits and be thy removed. Ephesians 4, 14 says this, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and deceive. We need to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Are you with me, church? Amen. So he evicts the old way of teaching, the old way of thinking. Anytime you hear Jesus say, come out, he's cleaning the house. He's cleaning the house. And so we see him casting the devils out and unclean spirits out, verse 31, 32. But something very, in, something very interesting happened in verse 33. Look at verse 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door, verse 34, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. He's serving eviction notice all across the city. Every demon in the city got to go. They bring all these people to the door. This is the same house. The same house that said there was no room at the door. They had to tear the roof up. This is Peter's house. They had to tear the roof up to lay the man down. This is the same house. All the city. It says all the city was gathered at the door. Can you imagine all these devils, unclean spirits in the same house? All these devils in the same house, but Jesus is in the house. Yeah. Jesus can handle your devil. Jesus can handle your Satan. Yeah. I want to all them devils in my house. Hallelujah. But throughout, throughout Scripture, we see Jesus evicting. It's in Matthew. We won't go there. But in Matthew chapter 4, he's evicting devils and sickness and torment. So when the light comes in, darkness got to go. He, he, he evicts people when they, they change the money in the temple. He said, my house, God, my father has to be the house of prayer. He's serving eviction notice. I don't mind asking an unclean spirit to leave. I don't mind. If, if, if you scared of them, just tell them. They say, there's a devil in the house. Come get me. I don't mind asking them to leave. If y'all ever watch Martin, the show Martin, he, he, he tell his friend, he opened the door and said, get the step. I almost had the urge to open the door. Of the, the open door and say, get out of here, devil. I don't mind asking the devil to leave. I ask him to leave in a minute. Get out of here, devil. Hmm. Remember when they was healing Jarvis' daughter, they laughed him to scorn. But what did he do? He put them out. He evicted them. Put them out. Remember Paul, was this is what got Paul in trouble. Paul in trouble in Acts 16, this woman, this dancer, said she was a soothsayer. Paul and Silas, they just doing the work of the Lord. Teaching the gospel, but this, this, this woman, she's walking around day and day mocking them. These are the most high men of God. Paul couldn't take it no more. He said, turn around. He said, in the name of Jesus, come out of here. That would have got Paul in trouble. That's why you end up in jail. I don't mind asking the devil to leave. Ask that devil to leave. Don't let the devil hide in the church. Amen. Don't let the devil hide in the church. Don't let the devil hide in your house. Don't let the devil ride in your car. So if you let him ride in your car, he's gonna, if you let him ride, he's going to want to what? He's going to want to drive. Yeah. Let him ride, he want to drive. Three things you must do about Satan. Three things you must do with Satan and the devil. You must point him out, pray him out, and put him out. 
Point them out, pray them out, and play them out. You got to point them out. I got another little story I need to tell you a story. I'm trying to get done, Pastor. Another story. This actually happened over my old church. You know how we're so anxious to let people in because we're, we're, we're friendly. We're, we're, we're God's people. This one morning at the old church, this guy, he ran into the door. We're down on OBT and, and, and uh, OBT and, and holding. Anyway, it, it, it's a wicked area. It, it, it's a wicked area. <laughs> this guy ran into church early in the morning. He's sweating. And we figured he was on drugs and something like that. We just, okay, we're going to try to get you saved. This guy sweating and everything he's in the church. Only to find out he's running from the police. <laughs> but we're trying to save him. He's trying to hide from the police. <laughs> Don't let the devil hide in the church. That's a true story. You must point the Satan out. You, you, you have to identify him. So let me help you identify Satan. When we exalt, but we are, remember we're exalting Jesus, exposing Satan. Help you identify. Here's some of his names so that you can identify him right away. His name is Satan, for one, meaning he's an adversary. His name is the devil, meaning a slanderer. The evil one that, that, that he's intrinsically evil, that he cannot do good. He's a great red dragon. He's a, 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 a destructive creature. He's a serpent of old. In other words, the same Satan, the same devil that was back there with Adam, it's the same devil operating today, same Satan operating today, amen? amen. The Beelzebub is the Lord of flies, it's pestilence, they, they keep on pestilence. Bell, like, he's an accuser of the brethren. Yeah. Accuser of the brethren. There's other names and works that he goes by. But remember, there's only one Satan, but many devils. But let me give you a name above all names. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> That's the name you want to remember. El Shaddai. And here that scripture is that the song you were playing, it says, God wants us to handle our adversary. This is how God wants to say, how can one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight except their rock has sold them and uh, sold them and the Lord has shut them up. Amen. <laughs> one could put a thousand to flight. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. Understand this. That Satan is not all powerful. No. He don't know everything. He's not all knowing. He only guesses and he twists the truth. He has a little knowledge. He's not omnipresent. That's why he, why he have a whole lot of devils. Amen. But let me get on to the elimination. In Romans chapter 6, what Jesus eliminates is the power of sin. Romans 6, verse 10 and verse 12 talk about that sin no longer have dominion over you. Amen. That you're dead to sin. Amen. Jesus eliminates the sting of death and the victory of the grave when he takes the keys from Satan. Amen. In Romans 8, he eliminates the penalty of sin for the believer. Hallelujah. He says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. In Matthew 27, this is what I like. And, and you can come on, Brother Simon. Y'all can get ready. He eliminates the wall, the petition that was between me, you, and God. That the bell was torn from the top to the bottom. The bell was torn. He eliminates that petition. Mm. It says, behold, the bell of the temple was rent, twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks went. He eliminates the tradition of religion and introduced grace and grace in relationship with Jesus Christ. He eliminates when he's carrying the cross. When Jesus is carrying the cross, he eliminating the gap between you and God. Amen? He's eliminating. He said, well, while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. That you could have a way that he told the veil. He eliminating. It said that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be. But with the mouth, man believe unto righteousness. With the heart, man confession. With the mouth, with the heart, man believe unto righteousness. With the heart, confession made unto salvation. He eliminates the grip Satan had on you. Amen. Amen. He who the Son sets free Amen. is free indeed. Amen. Exalting Jesus, exposing Satan.